Peter Parfit and welcome to this video about the 3M VersaFlow system. The VersaFlow is a powered respirator that's designed to protect the user from dust, fumes and mist. Now the VersaFlow comes with many variants with different hoods, helmets, respirators and filters to suit the requirements of a variety of industries. It might be flour milling, it might be welding, it might be the chemical industry. But today we're talking about the hazards in the woodworking workshop. Now in the woodworking workshop we have to protect our hearing and our sight, but also our respiratory system, our lungs, our throat and our nasal passages. And over time exposure to wood dust can cause a number of conditions which might start with just simple asthma but these can lead to more serious conditions over time. Woods which are known to be particularly difficult are things like Iroko and teak. Man-made materials like MDF are particularly bad. But some people find, after even short exposure, sapili, walnut, even pine can give them problems. Let me take you through the various parts as they've come out of the boxes. First I have the M106 headpiece. And this is the lightweight version which weighs only 554 grams. You can get a version which provides a helmet uh, facility here which is slightly heavier. It consists of a face shield which can be raised or lowered. And mine has a protective film on it uh, which is just stuck on. There is a seal here which seals around the operator's face. There are webbing straps here which can be adjusted for comfort for the operator and there is an adjustable strap here which can be tightened and loosened uh, once the unit has been placed on the head. I've got the optional ear defenders and mine came ready fitted. This is the TR315 respirator and it consists of the respirator unit and it comes complete with a particulate filter. This is the TR3710E particulate filter. There is a pre-filter, there is a hose which connects the respirator to the helmet, there is a manometer which is used for testing the system to ensure that the filters are not clogged, it comes with a lithium ion battery, there is a battery charger and a power supply unit for the battery charger and there are instructions for both sets of equipment. And there is a bag which is supplied to put the helmet in when it's not in use. And there's a foam insert which can provide some additional padding suitable for people with slightly smaller heads. Now in order to fit the filter and the pre-filter we proceed as follows. On the respirator unit press the button that's on the side here and this then allows the cover to come off. Take the pre-filter and you'll see that its shape matches the shape of the inside of the cover and put the pre-filter in place just like so. Then you take the filter and you see at the top of the filter cover there's a clear window. Well this label on the filter needs to go at the top so it shows through that window and so you install it like that. Once it's snugly home you turn it round and with the label showing at the top, and this is the top of the unit, we then return the cover back into its position and click it shut. Like so. That's it. Done. To fit the hose to the respirator, you'll see that there's a bayonet type pair of lugs here and there's a pair of slots here which take that. So you line those two up, push it in and then give it a, a twist of a quarter turn. And that's it. Secure. The battery charger is simplicity itself. You plug the mains lead into the transformer. You plug the end of the transformer into the underside of the charging unit. You put the battery in place and then it starts to charge. Well the battery is fully charged and if you ever need to check the condition of the battery there is a test button on the battery itself. You press that and there's a row of LEDs which tell you the state of the battery. It's now fully charged. So to insert the battery into position, you put this end in and then give it a little push and that's it, clicked in place. 
Now, every now and again, one should check the efficiency of the filter and the motor uh, using this manometer, which is supplied as part of the kit. In order to do the check, remove the hose and then fit the manometer here. Then turn the unit so that the manometer is vertical and then switch it on. You've got to give the motor a few seconds to come up to speed. It's slowly powering up and you'll see the red ball in the manometer begin to rise. And ultimately you should be seeing the ball going at least to where this line is which is marked on the manometer. And that looks fine to me. Our next task is to get the helmet sitting comfortably on your head. Start by lifting the visor into the upward position. Underneath here there's a webbing strap arrangement and what we need to do now is to adjust this and there's a single adjuster, it's coloured blue, so that your head fits in to this so it feels comfortable. Loosen or tighten the strap to make any adjustments and then try it again. And once you feel it's right, you should not need to adjust it again. When you put the helmet unit on, you're going to use this control here, which goes anti-clockwise to loosen and clockwise to tighten, to get it fitting comfortably on your head. So it's on, I adjust this, a couple of clicks, and it now feels pretty secure. Now putting the first flow on and off is dead easy, even if you wear glasses like me. Start by putting the helmet on, then take the respirator and drop the belt, turn the respirator on, then adjust the helmet, get the ear defenders in place, drop the visor, make sure the seal's done, and away you go. Taking it off, dead easy. This is the procedure. Visor up, ear defenders off. Press and hold the button to turn the power off. Remove the respirator. Take off the helmet. And you're done. Glasses still on. Now, every now and again, I've got to empty my drop box because it's taking about 99.9% .9 of all the alcohol playing up the bands or several other things and saving the filter. Now battery life is reckoned to be up to 12 hours but I've used it now for two days in a row uh, and it seemed to me that I was using it virtually all day on both of those days uh, and it's still not flat. Um, I can't tell you the precise length of time it was running but it has to be uh, over 12 hours I would have thought. And I thought I'd show you, uh, the battery is probably in its last 20% now, uh, that even when the battery gets low it still delivers uh, the same amount of air to the user and that's really important and that's really good and you check that the alarm that detects that the filter's blocked or the air tube is blocked is working by covering the air tube like this and you'll hear the motor start to speed up and then the red light and the audible alarm will sound, the red light will show up here and the motor's working jolly hard and there's the alarm so we remove the blockage put this back onto the helmet, so, and then the alarm will clear itself naturally, although one can uh, stop and start the machine if one wished to. And there it is, back to normal. When the battery symbol flashes and you get that audible warning, it means you need to recharge the battery. Now before I come to my conclusions, let me just remind you of the other options. You could go uh, for a disposable mask like this to protect your lungs. Uh, but I found that uh, these, now I'm wearing glasses almost all the time, make my glasses mist up. So I then got myself a uh, reusable uh, respirator like this, 
made by 3M, uh, and it doesn't suffer from that effect because as you breathe out, so the air goes out that way. But after a while, this fills up with condensation, and you have to empty it out, particularly on a cold day in the workshop. And I didn't really like the idea of all that dampness around. So I don't use that very often. Now, the disadvantage of these masks, the disposable and the reusable ones, is that you have to breathe a little harder in order to get air into your lungs. Whereas with the powered respirator, the air is delivered to you. Ear defenders, not a problem. I have to look after what hearing I've got left. And so uh, I do uh, use them quite a lot. And I've had eye protection. Uh, and these are actually, again, made by 3M. If I don't need to wear... Uh, prescription glasses, then I'll wear eye protection like this, and they're perfectly good. And of course, the advantage of the VersaFlow system is that you have your respiratory protection, your face and eye protection, and your hearing protection all in one package. Let's do some number crunching. The M106 headpiece is about £160, including VAT in the UK. The TR315 respirator is about £560 in the UK. The optional ear defenders, and I really recommend you get those because they are brilliant, they do fit well, uh, just about £23 in the UK. The filters, and the particulate filter is the type you'd use in the uh, woodworking workshop, is about £22. A pack of 10 pre-filters is just over £8, and the peel-off visor protectors, you get 10 in a packet for just over £15. So what you see in front of you is just about £740, including VAT. And you have to say to yourself, well, that's rather a lot of money, isn't it? But is it? It's about the cost of a, a major woodworking tool or machine in the average serious DIY workshop about the same price you'd pay for a, a, a good quality bandsaw, the same price you'd pay for a, a lower-end planing machine. You should consider this to be another major tool in your workshop because this tool is the one that's going to be with you all the time protecting you. Now, this has to be the best powered respirator in the four to eight hundred pounds bracket. I think it is absolutely brilliant. The headpiece, only 554 grams, is really comfortable to wear, even when you wear it all day. The respirator on a belt around your waist, well, you really do soon forget it's there. The battery is lasting at least 12 hours, and actually some of us do work long days, and that is good too. And it doesn't take that long to charge. The consumables are better priced than many of the cheaper powered respirators. So I'm starting to think that this is actually not such a bad deal after all. It's rugged. It's not going to get destroyed on its first afternoon in a professional workshop. And over a long period of time, something like this is going to pay back because it is so well made, the consumables are well priced, and it comes from a big company which isn't going to disappear tomorrow. Now, I had a little bit of a, a health worry because of dust uh, not so long ago, and I had to go and see a special doctor -y chap, and I've developed a mild asthmatic condition, and it's nothing to worry about. But it's the sort of thing that starts slowly but surely in the woodworking environment. We all tend to ignore it. We all tend to think, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just cut this piece of MDF. I'll just machine this, that, or the other. And you don't bother. You might not bother with your ear defenders. You might not bother with uh, any face protection. You might not bother uh, with any respiratory protection. And that's a mistake. Never, ever leave the protection on one side. You have to protect yourself. Please do so. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.